Hey, welcome to today's video where my assistant Molly will be asking me questions that I have never heard of before. We did an Instagram uh, Q&A box and Molly has loads of questions that are supposedly juicy. So enjoy this episode and let's get right into it. So first question, we're going in easy. Why do you live part-time in Bahamas and London? My living situation is definitely a curiosity point for a lot of people. Not many people live between a random island in the Bahamas and London. So London, I'll respond to this one first. It's always been a dream for me to have a home in London in this area. It's always been something that I only ever dreamt of back in the day. And when I was able to, you know, actually invest the money and buy a property here six months ago, it just made a lot of sense for us to spend as much time as possible in the year in London now. So I used to live in London for many of you guys that don't know full time for almost five years in my early 20s. And then three and a half years ago, Ben and I moved to the Bahamas. We moved, um, you know, really at the beginning of COVID. And I guess the inspiration came from me starting my first subscription business and believing in it so much, almost delusionally, that I decided to move somewhere tax free before even making enough money for that to make sense. The Bahamas is legally um, like a zero ta income tax country and our my business is set up there and we live there for most of the year. So it's been a big investment into our lifestyles because all the money that we earn, we keep for ourselves. Um, and it's also been the reason why, you know, there's no way I've needed to raise money for superhuman. And it's why I live the life I do today because you know, 50% of my money doesn't go to taxes. So um, the reason that we're in the Bahamas is because we love having a part of our lives that is a lot more relaxing and calm and embedded into nature. And then the reason we have a place in London is because I also love that city part of me. I love this city. London is my favorite city in the world, like full stop. It's where I, you know, reinvented myself. So I just, there is a special, energy about London to me and that's why I'm spending now four months a year here. Amazing. Okay, well with that, let's jump into question two. Um, so how do you think your relationship with your body affects your success and wealth? Your relationship with your body influences success and wealth immensely and this is something that most people don't think are tied together but when you are physically feeling good about yourself and you're in this energy of just self-love and abundance within yourself not even money abundance but just an abundance and your happiness levels in life an abundance of love towards yourself everything changes so one area of your life being positive is influenced by every other area of your life so to create more success and wealth and happiness in your life if you every single day in the back of your mind are feeling unworthy and not feeling good in your body it's going to hinder that success and wealth i am a firm believer that your energy creates your life and if you are feeling insecure and you are limiting yourself by dieting and thinking about how terrible you look in this old pair of jeans that doesn't fit you anymore and you are consumed with this mental thought pattern of not being enough that's going to show up in your finances that's going to show up in your business and you're not going to be able to get to the next level without fixing that first absolutely absolutely so moving on to question three is there anything that was a dream possession but you now regret buying a dream possession that i now regret buying um yeah, I guess so, actually. Um, when I, before I had any money, I always thought, oh my gosh, all the handbags I could have. Can, I, can you imagine just going to Chanel or like a Bottega and just buying whatever handbag you want? And that was a really, like that was one, I, I don't feel like I'm too materialistic, actually. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, like I like nice things and everyone I think would think that I'm a bit more materialistic than I am, but I really don't now put as much value mm -hmm. onto physical things. So I would say handbags. I have too many Bottega Veneta handbags that I don't wear. So I would say handbags I've actually spent a bit too much money on. And another one that's actually funny that you ask, I'm wearing it today. So 
a few years ago as like an you know big accomplishment i've always had this rolex on mm -hmm. my vision board i always thought oh my gosh like i'll have a rolex one day i literally it's such a coincidence i'm wearing it today i never wear it ever 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 i don't know why i'm wearing it today because i was like oh i'll get all cute for filming but honestly i never wear it like i just don't really wear it i'm also not that into gold anymore these days mm -hmm. so i wouldn't say i regret it because it reminds me of a time mm -hmm where I was like so excited I could afford my first Rolex. It's more of like a memory, mm -hmm. but I don't wear it as much as I think I used to think I would. Do you ever still experience like guilt when you buy something mm. expensive? Yeah. Yeah. Um, not often. And I'll check myself when I notice that I have that guilt. I'll check myself and I will, or consciously I'll see, I'll hear those thoughts and then I'll say to myself, be in an abundant mindset, I can afford it. Mm -hmm. I can afford it. I can afford it and you know I, I can go to the fancy beauty place and get you know the fancy facials because for me what I do spend money on is like beauty stuff mm -hmm. and I love a facial and I love massages and I love you know I go to the chiropractor acupuncture cupping massage like two massages a week like I love my treatments that is what I would splurge on you know having a beautiful luxurious environment treating myself to treatments helping the people mm -hmm. in my life like I do things in my own way so I do deal with guilt and regret sometimes and then I don't, I, I don't feel like I should because I'm way more frugal than I am an overspender, I think. What has and hasn't reached your expectations after becoming your future self? Has anything surprised you? When I, so I feel like I am my future self right now, but that being said, I don't feel like I've reached a destination and I've said this from the beginning, even when you achieve the next level version of yourself, you still need to have aspirations and goals and an idea in your mind of a better future. I still believe there are future self versions of me. And I know that for a fact, I am nowhere near the success and impact and life that I want in my future. I'm nowhere near that. I've definitely changed an immense amount since I've started. So eight years ago having eight pounds in my bank account to now having the business I've created today, having the life I've created today, you know, that shift is monumental in itself, but from where I am now to where I'm going to be is even bigger. So um, to answer your question though, what has surprised me since becoming this next version of my future self? Because the Mimi today was the Mimi that I had mm -hmm. visualized and dreamt of, you know, five, even four years ago. So. The thing that has shocked me is that I wouldn't be spending as much as um, as I initially thought I would. Another thing that has shocked me is that this is going to sound ridiculous, and please, you know, don't judge me. But earning six figures a month is not as much as I thought it was. Really? Yeah, it's not because you know, and my expenses are huge, mm -hmm. and you know that. Yeah with like, well, the superhuman expenses are huge, but then my living expenses are also huge because yeah. the more money you make, the more that you spend and the more your monthly costs are, like even just like the mortgage for this place is crazy. Like I didn't have expenses like that. I didn't have a standard of traveling business or first back then. Mm -hmm. So I'm spending a lot more now. And I used to think, let's say with like 100K a month, I would be able to do anything. But no, like things go places. I hire a lot of people and I invest in a lot of softwares for the business and 100K a month in my mind when I was 20 years old felt like the most amount of money in the world. But now I'm like really excited to get to the next level because mm -hmm. I, I feel like I could do so much more. It feels still limiting to me. Another thing that surprised me is that I would still deal with my old self thinking a lot really yeah 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 the thing is i bounce back quickly now mm -hmm. but i still experience her every day every day but i bounce back really quickly so i still have to do the work mm -hmm. to get me to that mindset that i need to be in even once i've achieved being here like it still requires doing work every single day it requires, you know, priming your mind, activating. It, it requires like me visualizing who I wanna be and being her. You get used to things once you get to that next level. And I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting me to be so grateful and so happy every day for this life I've created. I have to work to get to that place, which is really surprising. When is your book coming? So I actually haven't told anyone this yet. <laughs> I have been waiting for Kate, my book agent, to get back 
to me about when I can actually reveal what's happening with the book. But um, long story short, you guys, I got a book deal and <laughs> this was something that I was you know, trying to create for a long mm -hmm. time, trying to manifest for a long time. And uh, in October, which I literally, I mentioned it maybe in an Instagram caption, but I got, I got a book deal with one of the biggest publishers in the world and it was for way more than I was expecting and it's a global book deal and I'll tell you which publisher it is, you'll definitely know it. I'm extremely excited and proud, but the book will be coming out spring 2025. So I'm super excited and it's all about the bounce back rate and it is all about becoming the version of you that you need to become to live the best life possible, the potential life, your ultimate potential. That's so exciting. I'm really excited. Lots of work before then. A lot of work, <laughs> but you know what? Honestly, I, I'm so not nervous. I'm just, I know I need to get into my mode. Like I'm not nervous about things anymore. We were talking about this yeah. earlier. I don't get nervous anymore. Like I really don't, cause I just, I put myself into uncomfortable positions so often mm -hmm. that that feeling of nervousness, like over time, cause it's like comes with practice. Like it just, I'm numb to it now. Mm -hmm. That being said, I feel like if I was about to step on a stage and do a speech in front of a hundred thousand people, I probably would be nervous, but I've never done that before. Mm -hmm. But the more I would do that, the less nervous I'd be. So, but with the book, um, I've written a lot and yeah. I have the whole outline and I have the, you know, the core skeleton done, which is the hardest part in my opinion. So Definitely. I think from here, it's easy breezing. Absolutely. We've come to the end of part one of this juicy Q&A. To watch part two, just click the link here.